morning. Welcome to Woodland United Methodist Church on this beautiful Sunday, on this Mother's Day Sunday as we prepare for worship. Let's get our hearts ready and let's receive the grace of God as it overwhelms us. And now let's listen to our Woodland Weekly Update. This is your Woodland Weekly Update for the week of May 9th. Happy Mother's Day to all of our mothers, aunts, and those who are like mothers to us. We wish you all of God's blessings. Our blood drive with the American Red Cross is on May 26th. For more information, please go to redcrossblood.org and you can register to give blood. If you'd like to volunteer as a host, please contact me at the church office. The food pantry is in need of your help. This is an ongoing ministry of our church. If you would like to donate canned goods, snacks, or other foods that are non-perishable, you can drop them off in the pantry or bring them to the church office, and we would be happy to refill the pantry for you. Our sanctuary choir will resume practice later this month. If you are interested in joining our sanctuary choir, please see Jonathan or Jessica Hall for more information. The United Methodist Men will be meeting in person next Sunday, May 16th at 7 p.m. in Wesley Hall. All men of the church are invited to come on out. There will be no youth group or women's Bible study this afternoon, Sunday, May 9th, for Mother's Day. Enjoy your time with your mothers and we will see you next week. And that's just a few of the things happening here at Woodland. For more information on any of our activities or happenings here, check out our website or your newsletter. Please join us in hymn number 145, Morning Has Broken. The Old Testament reading for today comes from the book of 1 Kings, chapter 3, verses 16 through 27. Later, two women who were prostitutes came to the king and stood before him. The one woman said, Please, my lord, this woman and I live in the same house, and I gave birth while she was in the house. Then, on the third day after I gave birth, this woman also gave birth. We were together. There was no one else with us in the house. Only the two of us were in the house. Then this woman's son died in the night because she lay on him. She got up in the middle of the night and took my son from beside me while your servant slept. She laid him at her breast and laid her dead son at my breast. When I rose in the morning to nurse my son, I saw that he was dead. But when I looked at him closely in the morning, clearly, it was not the son that I had born. But the other woman said, No, the living son is mine, and the dead son is yours. The first said, No, the dead son is yours, and the living son is mine. So they argued before the king. Then the king said, The one who says, This is my son that is alive, and your son is dead. While the other says, Not so. 
your son is dead and my son is the living one. So the king said, bring me a sword. And they brought a sword before the king. And the king said, divide the living boy in two, then give half to the one and half to the other. But the woman whose son was alive said to the king, because compassion for her son burned within her, please, my Lord, give her the living boy. Certainly do not kill him. The other said, it shall be neither mine nor yours. Divide it. Then the king responded, give the first woman the living boy. Do not kill him. She is his mother. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And now we come to our time of prayer and we begin with our congregational prayer. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we pray for our mothers who have given us life and love and for those women around us who like mothers have also nurtured and cared for us. Loving God as a mother gives life and nourishment to her children so you watch over your church. Bless these women that they may be strengthened as Christian mothers that the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with the spirit of profound respect. Grant this through Christ our Lord. O oh, gracious Lord, we thank you for embracing our mothers, embracing all of those who have mothered us. Thank you, Lord, that you've allowed them to be instruments of grace for us and lift us up and to send us forth to be more of what we could be in you because they nurtured us and sent us forth for that very purpose. And our gracious Lord, we thank you for what you're doing for us in this place as we're listening to your voice, as we're being guided by your spirit, as we're being lifted by your heart. And Lord, as you prepare us to go forth in your presence, we thank you. We pray for it, we listen, and we respond, and we go. We also lift up those who need a special touch upon their bodies, their minds, and their spirits. Let them at this moment feel your touch. Let them at this moment feel your embrace anew. And help them, Lord, to be still so that you can speak, to listen, and then to obey. Help them to be ready, Lord, to be touched by such grace, to feel the comfort that only you can give, and to be lifted up to new possibilities in health and in thoughts and in care and in direction that you may lead them. Let them, Lord, at this moment know that we're all praying for them. Let them feel the power of this prayer. And let them realize our spirits and God's spirit has united into one spirit as we send it forth to their spirits to help them become all that they can be and to trust as they can trust in God. Oh, gracious Lord, we thank you for all of this. And we celebrate who we are that we are the people of God, the children of God, the family of God, brothers and sisters in Christ, the very body of Christ in service and love. And we thank you, Lord, that we can testify that we are one in this prayer and in this spirit by sharing together in the very prayer that, Lord Jesus, you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now we come to the time of our service where we can give back to the ministries of our church and to the greater United Methodist Church. We can give in so many different ways. You can simply follow the text message instructions on the screen. You can go to our church website. You could mail in your check to the address here. Or you could call the church office and we'll be happy to come by and pick it up. No matter how you give, take this time to pray, meditate, consider how you can best support the ministries of Woodland United Methodist Church here in our community and in the greater world. Thank you.
Let us pray. God of unimaginable love, we have known your caring since we were babies in our mother's arms. We have been told the stories of your love, and we have sung songs of your love. These things bring us comfort. What challenges us is the command of Jesus. As I have loved you, you should love one another. Not just those who think as we do, pray as we do, and look the way we do. Help us through our giving, our living, and our loving, to live up to the challenge of your loving as you would have us love. In the name of our risen Savior, we pray. Amen. And now we come to our reading from the New Testament. This comes from Revelations chapter 12, verses 1 through 4. A great portent appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. She was pregnant and was crying out in birth pangs, in the agony of giving birth. Then another portent appeared in heaven, a great red dragon with seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems on his heads. His tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. Then the dragon stood before the woman who was about to bear a child so that he might devour her child as soon as he was born. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. On this Mother's Day, we talk about mothers bringing forth their children. We talk about mothers who give physical birth to their children, mothers who aren't the ones who gave physical birth to their children, but they give birth of them as they send them into the world, as they prepare them and nurture them to go forth into the world. And in that sense, they're giving birth as well to something beautiful and wonderful. When we give birth in this sense, we're giving birth to the future. We talk about our mothers doing that, preparing our future, preparing us to be the people that God has called us to be. And it's exciting to know where that strength and that grace comes from and know that that also is from God because God prepared them to be the preparer for us. That's what it is to be born in God. That's why we talk about being born again because God does that again. He becomes our mother, giving us new life and new birth. God is both our father and our mother who nurtures us and lifts us up. And this story, that to be looked at as God himself working through this story. God is like our mother who gives birth to us. And the story is telling us that this, this woman who's in birth pains because she's getting ready to give birth to this child, that this child is our Lord, this child is Christ, this child is our hope. And because of this child, we are born and we're able to rise up and to be that instrument of grace for others. God is giving birth to us and preparing us and nurturing us. And there's suffering and there's pain in the process of getting us ready. Knowing that you have to do some things that may be a little just uncomfortable for us, may have to lead us in the ways that are going to involve suffering. Jesus tried to tell that to his disciples that as I have suffered, you will suffer. As I have been persecuted, you will be persecuted. As I have struggled, you have been struggled. And as you have struggled. And as I sometimes begin to wish it was all over, there'll be days that you will wish it was all over before you got to that moment that I was preparing you for. But a mother prepares and then sins. As hard as it is it to let go, they let go so that that child can grow and become everything that it was called to be, to do their part. I've seen stories of mothers, uh, of mother an animals that are mothers, and I, I'm one of the ones that I, I, I picture is the, the mother, who, a bird who's got the, the little birds in the, in the nest, and, they, and they, they nudge them, and they nudge them, and after they've shown them everything they can show them, then they nudge them to get out of the nest. And that's a big drop when you get out of the nest. But they know they're ready. They know they've been prepared. They know they can do it. They also know that if they don't do it, they can't survive. They won't survive unless they move forward to the new and the different and fly. So she nudges them to they fly. 
I saw a, a, a picture of a little video of a, a duckling, a, a ducklings with their mother, and they were on a pier. And as they were walking on the pier, the mother was in front of them, and they got in line. And mother walked to the edge of the pier. It was like the last lesson or the next lesson for them because they were getting ready to learn how to fish <laughs> in the water. But she jumped off the pier. And then they came and looked over the pier. And they saw their mother down there. And as they're looking and thinking, they finally have to decide whether they're ready to do the same thing or they're going to trust that, they, that she's letting them, leading them here for a reason. And it's not for bad things. It's something good. So then one by one they would jump. But you notice they lined up. Some of, one of, some of them were much more assured and much more sure that everything was going to be fine. And they got right up front and they jumped. The other ones got in the back. And every time someone, one of the others would jump, they would look in the water to see, yeah, they're okay. He's okay. She's okay. And then finally it came their turn and they jumped. But it was necessary to take that leap we call it in, in theology and in church the leap of faith. Soren Kierkegaard, a great Danish theologian, spoke of the leap of faith. Stepping out and trusting. Another theologian, Dr. Ebling, talked about stepping into a bottomless pit with assurance because you know someone's there to catch you. You leap of faith as you jump and step in. And go. Well, God is calling us to something new and fresh and different. And He wants to change us. He wants us to be different. He wants us to take risks, to step out on faith and trust. He does not want us to stay still and stay alone and keep our, our way of doing things the way that we've always done things. He wants us to become something. So the birth is powerful, but the birth is scary sometimes, and the birth it's a challenge and it is somewhat something to be terrified of because you're thinking about what might happen since I don't know for sure what's out there. What might happen if I go? But your loving father, your loving mother is calling you to go. Trust me. It's wonderful out there. And it will be the most amazing thing that ever happened to you as you go forth in faith, as you have the adventure. There is another uh, book. Uh, there's a book by uh, a book called Jonathan Livington Seagull. It's about a seagull who, uh, and it was written like in the 70s. So anyone from that generation probably remembers the book because it was very popular. But Jonathan Livington Seagull was a seagull who wanted to fly. He loved flying. He wanted to learn more about what he can do if he flies. He wanted to feel the wind. He wanted to do his wings a certain way so he could go faster and he could enjoy and experience the glory of the heavens in the sky. But all the other birds didn't see it that way. They just thought their whole purpose for existing was to sit on the sand and then to eat and to sleep. And the only reason to fly was to get the food that you could bring back to the beach so you can go back to your routine of eating and sleeping and nothing more and, and just sitting. And he kept complaining he wanted to do more and they criticized him and attacked him and finally he broke away from the flock and he began to fly. And it became the most amazing thing to him. He actually entered into other dimensions of existence when he discovered there were others before him who had done this. And he began to inspire other, other seagulls to do the same. But the flock, the elders of the flock, attacked him and condemned him and excluded him and pushed him aside because that's not the way we do it. We like things the way they are. We want to be settled. We, we were very complacent. We, we, we're comfortable. And so when you hear stories about birth and the pain and the struggle of giving birth and letting out and going forth, it's scary. But there's some who don't want us to do that. And in the story, it says that this dragon shows up. And the dragon knows that something new and fresh and different is about to happen. And he has to stop it because he wants them to be complacent. He wants them not to think about what's out there and only be happy for what's right here. He wants them not to know that they can fly. He doesn't want them to know that they can make a difference in the world. 
because he doesn't want the world to change. He likes it just like it is. Very self-absorbed, very self-serving. Just take care of yourself. Look after number one, and number one being you. That's what he likes. So when he knew this birth was about to happen, he knew that this woman was going to give birth to the future, to the glory of God, to the blessings of God. It's going to give birth to a new life that would allow all people to come together in the same spirit of love and care. All people begin to think of others before themselves. He wanted to stop that because that went against everything he stood for. Now, who is this dragon? You know, we can sit here and think about who is this dragon. If we read along, it would, you would hear that they say this is the devil. And of course, it's not hard for us to picture that. <clears throat> the devil is the dragon. But it's the evil. It's that which wants to stop progress, stop change, stop anything that calls us to step out on faith. It doesn't take faith to do things the way you've always done them because you've seen by doing the things the way you've always done it, everything has worked out pretty good for you. And you know there's no need to say, well, God, please help me have a tomorrow like I had today because all i got to do is get up in the morning and do the same things I did today. And that doesn't require a lot of faith. But if we say, Lord, whatever you want of me, please take hold of me and send me where you would send me and use me how you would use me and let me be a difference in someone's life. Let me help someone believe in you and believe in themselves because you believe in them and what they can be, that they are special, that they are chosen that they are called, and that God loves them so much, and He wants to give them what they don't have, but that which will make them better, make them able to have confidence and assurance, make them feel good about themselves because they've been reborn into His image, that they are God's child, and being God's child, the creator of the universe, the King of kings and Lord of lords, then you have reason to hold your head up high. Not because of anything you've done, but because of what He has done for you and with you and wants to do through you. We're being born to a new life. Mothers set that example by giving birth, whether giving physical birth or giving spiritual birth by the nurturing and caring of their children and preparing them to go forth, not knowing fully where they're going to end up, but knowing that God has called you to send them into the world. And you want to equip them and prepare them so they know that when they go, please never forget you go with God. With God. And you listen to God. And you follow God. You follow Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. You follow Him. So this is about birth. In the other scripture, in the New Old Testament, you have that story of the two prostitute women who were living in the same house and they, and they had both had babies at about the same time, just a few days apart. And at night, they were laying there with their babies when they went to sleep and one of them rolled over on her baby and suffocated the baby and the baby died. But when she realized that her baby was dead, she snuck over to the other woman and put her baby at the other woman's breast and took the woman's live baby and put it at hers. The next day, the woman who had the dead baby laying at her realized it wasn't her baby. And she went to the woman, but the woman said, no, 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 you're wrong. That is your baby. This one's mine. And they went to the king arguing. Now, the story is not as shallow as it appears <laughs> because when I first hear the story, I think it sounds kind of shallow. The idea that the, the king says, give me a sword. And he says, I'll divide the child in half. And they both... One of them says, no, please don't. But you got to understand, this is not just a shallow story. This is a deep story. Now, the woman who had lost her child, now she's going through grief. She's going through a tremendous grief, but she also is going through the very self-absorbed way of looking at the world that the world offers us, offers to us. So she claims the other baby, not because she wants the other baby, not because she'll never remember that this is not really her baby, but she wants that woman 
to suffer just like she's suffering. She doesn't want to see joy and happiness and life-giving spirit in the house. She wants sadness and depression. And so when she takes that child, she wants to see that woman suffer like she has suffered for what happened to her child. And though the king's ready to split it in half, and the one says, no, please give her the child. You see, she's a mother. The mother will sacrifice everything for the child. Will sacrifice everything of herself so that child can have everything of God. We're willing to suffer, willing to be afraid. We were talking about Jesus and his mother, and his mother suffered with him. She felt everything he felt, but she had to let him go to do what God had called him to do, what he had to do, and even to the point of death. And even though there were times when she ran after him, hoping to change the story, hoping to bring him home so that he wouldn't have to face all of this, but Jesus had to remind her, though he understood her love for him. And when we get all the way to the cross, you know, she's at the cross. Jesus, who looks out into the world with all the hate and the anger and the meanness around him, condemning him and wanting him dead and tortured him, and now he's dying on a cross and they're laughing at him and even casting lots for his clothes. They're just having a party around him, suffering. But then he sees his mother. She's there. The one person who he knew loved him more than anything. The one person who had sent him forth in God, who had nurtured him and prepared him for his ministry with God and had sent him forth. She was there. And he ends up telling John, this is your mother. And and he says to her, this is your son. And John takes care of her from that moment on. But she was there. And I've said, and I swear over and over again, that when Jesus died on that cross, two people died on that cross, Jesus and his mother. But she felt every nail. She felt every whip lash. She felt it all. Because this was her baby. This was her child. But God was there for her as well. She was preparing something amazing that became the salvation of our world. So now we have this woman who is giving the child because she is the real mother. She's the one who who really loved God. The child, she's the one who wanted the child, but gave the child up, was willing to give the child up so that that child could live and grow and become. No matter how much suffering that involved for her, it would be worth it just to see her son become what God had prepared her son to be. So that's who we are. We are people who are being sent forth. We're people being born to new life. We're people being sent out to something different and amazing. And as we're being sent out, the forces will rise up and try to stop it, try to devour the dream, try to devour the new thing, trying to devour the possibility of any change, anything that might involve struggle and sacrifice, anything that might lead to God's adventure out there. Amazing. And if you read on in the story, you know that when the serpent could not stop this child, could not stop Christ at all, no matter how hard he tried, then it said he decided to go to war with all the other children, those who were born in Christ, those born again, who were going forward to go after them and try to destroy them and try to stop them and try to encourage no one to listen to them. Come on back to the calm, safe. Come on back to the the world of comfort. Come on back to the world where everything's already decided. And all you got to do is like in the story of John the Living Seagull, all you got to do is sit and eat and go out and do what you need to do so you can come home and sit and eat and sleep. And then tomorrow you can do it again in confidence without any struggle or any faith, just accepting the way it is. But then, because there are those out there who have stood up and proclaimed the love of Jesus, because there are those out there that people have looked at and said, I remember when, 
you weren't like this. What has happened to you? Where did this joy come from? How come in the midst of anxiety, trouble, or even suffering in this world, you have this joy that seems to come from another world? How is that possible? Then you can talk about your birth in Christ. And you can talk about the struggles you went through to get here. But you had a mother, a spiritual mother, physical mother. You had mothers who lifted you up and pushed you forward and gave you the peace and gave you the comfort and gave you the spirit that told you it was worth the journey. It was worth it to reach out with God, to go with God. You were prepared for this. And then you can talk about the ones who prepared you, whether it's your father or your mother, or whether it's your cousin or your aunt, or whether it's your best friend, or whether it was somebody at your Sunday school class, or whether, whatever it was. These people became instruments of God. They began to follow the example of mothers and how they prepared you to go forward, not to stand still. And as we all know, we have to continue to grow because when you stop growing, you begin to die. And that's why the devil wanted to stop it because he didn't want you to live. He wanted you to die and be separate from God and not walking with God and being instruments of God and being a testimony to the world and what it means to have him living in you, with you, and through you. Let's go forth in that spirit. Let's go forth in that spirit. And now, let us listen to God's spirit. Let us be transformed by his presence. Let us be reborn in him. And let us be nudged out of the nest and trusting when he says, you can fly, go forth with me. And together, we're about to do miraculous things. Let's go forth with him. In Jesus' name, amen.